pathology of psychogenic seizures has also undergone somewhat of an evolution, given that they weren't really seizures. Um, they're now referred to as PNES, or psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, even though they kept the word seizures in the name, and uh, who knows if that's for political correctness. But in any case, it's considered to be a conversion disorder, i.e. functional neurological disorder without actual physical or neurological basis. Uh, most of these patients who do have these kinds of events have underlying demonstrable psychological disorders. Um, of all seizure patients, everybody referred to epilepsy monitoring, up to 20% of those patients are diagnosed with PNES. And that diagnosis needs to be based on all available uh, information including the history of the patient, the characteristics of the seizure disorder, and ultimately, if necessary, an EEG video monitoring. I only meant to say two E's if I said six of them. It was too many. Some of the ictal characteristics which are somewhat helpful in distinguishing seizures from PNES include the following listed here on the slide one of which is interesting, it's forced eye closure. In other words, eye closure in which the patient will resist the attempt to open the eyes in an actual convulsive event, the eyes remain open. So if the uh, history or if there is a uh, video showing that the patient forcibly closing their eyes, it's suspicious that it's really not a physiological event. Um, if the movements are out of phase, so if the left arm is flexing and the right extending, and vice versa. That would be another indicator that it's likely a psychogenic event if the head goes side to side in a sort of a no mimicry. Uh, again, there's really no cortical representation which would manifest itself in such a fashion. And finally, um, the presence of pelvic thrusting is not one seen usually in um, organic see, real seizures. Um, the current DSM-5 criteria includes um, for the diagnosis of PNES abnormalities on the physical examination which are inconsistent with physiological properties as opposed to previous diagnoses which included the necessity to uh, rule out malingering and some other psychiatric issues. Now, um, if on your examination you find evidence for non-physiological findings, that will be helpful in making this diagnosis. And the next slide includes um, a, uh, an attempt to come to the conclusion that an episodic disorder is, in fact, a psychogenic non-epileptic seizure disorder takes into account the patient's uh, psychological psychiatric background, the uh, reporting or description of the events, but it's most helpful to be able to see those events. And I've found uh, requesting that patients or their families actually take a little videos on their smartphones, a very helpful device for an enabling me to see what they're actually referring to. There are also uh, ambulatory EEGs. It can be worn for 24, 48, 72 hours and can be compared to journals or logs kept by the patient. But if things remain ambiguous, then inpatient video EEG uh, would likely be the gold standard. Now, there's a ethical question as to whether or not certain provocative maneuvers should be performed, i.e. infusing a placebo and trying to suggest to the patient that that might induce seizures. I think that uh, that practice is sort of frowned upon. And uh, there are other maneuvers which embody physiological um, activators. For example, asking the patient to hyperventilate. And if that reproduces their symptoms, uh, you don't have to resort to um, a medical intervention which, when discovered by the patient, would cause a great deal of suspicion and lack of confidence in the physicians.